everybody, this is Mr. Bureau from Staten Island Tech, and right now I'm going to show you the details of the patterns project in this video. So I'm going to flip over to the PDF that is available to explain the project. It says in this project, you will use CAD to make an extremely detailed version of the pattern seen below. All units of the drawing are in inches. I'm suggesting that you use line, circles, mirror, trim, move, rotate, offset, array. Very helpful here. Uh, the divide command, which we haven't explored. You might want to look at that one too. Uh, and certainly object snap and using the grid and, and things like that. You will be doing this on your template. That's very important. Um, and you will be discussing your technique in the design notes. That is also very important. Let me skip down to the bottom before we get into any of the, uh, the details of the creation process. But these are the eight patterns that you're going to be reproducing. Uh, you will be drawing everything that you see, including the dimensions. I did not go over dimensions yet in class or dimensioning, but it's not a difficult thing to access the commands. You're simply accessing the commands to make the dimensions look as they appear on this sheet it's not the same as actually learning how to dimension something the technique of dimensioning is what needs to be taught in class not accessing the commands so make sure your demands look exactly as these appear on here and if you have any problems you should seek help but anyway so you're reproducing each of these patterns uh you could see that they definitely incorporate a lot of the things that we have studied uh, you could use the mirror command like to, to make copies of these circles or the array command. Uh, a lot of trimming, a lot of relative input, snapping to centers, really managing all of the commands that we're used to using in class will help you reproduce these patterns. And I will be honest, each one of the patterns has kind of a pitfall built into it to demonstrate whether or not you had a complete understanding of what was being given to you. There is just enough information in each of the patterns to reproduce it perfectly. So for instance, like when they show a measurement over here, this, this measurement of one and nine sixteenths is measuring from the bottom right corner up to the, the top ring. And then this measurement over here is showing that there is one quarter inch between each ring. But that is all that is necessary to reproduce those rings. And then this thing over here, which obviously lies in the center of the square, can be made very, very quickly using the office, uh, the offset commit. I think you'll find that once you start working with it, it'll be very, very easily hit. Um, for this particular pattern, the one hint I'll throw you guys is that these points here are kind of like the midpoint of these segments. So as you're producing this particular part you will be able to kind of snap to those midpoints if you draw it properly and also when you're wondering how these arcs are built they are built in a way that is very exact it's not like you're estimating how the arc curves it has a correct amount of snaps to it that make it work this pattern over here is very simple notice there's no gap in the center that is a very very important thing so when you're doing your work, make sure no gap appears. Here, you're gonna wanna look at what these dimensions are referring to and how these center marks are generated. By looking at the dimensions and the center marks, you'll understand how to create these arcs, which may not be created using the arc command, and then they'll easily be reproduced using a function built into CAT. This one over here, I highly suggest that as you're drawing the rings after you use a command to produce all of them, you probably want to color them different colors and then proceed to trim them. The coloring will not stay, it's just there as an organizational technique to help you keep track of the trimming process. For the, the one that looks like a flower, there are visible gaps over here. Please take that into account when you're making your design. Um, this radius is rounded to the 64th as a denominator. So you're gonna have to adjust the settings in the, pro in, the, uh, in the drawing to make that happen. And there's instructions for that right above over here. 
So precision to one over 64. And then this picture over here tells you how to do that. And then this one, you'll notice that there are straight lines and then there are like kind of semicircles or arcs attaching to those straight lines. This is a pretty easy one to do. And then finally this thing, which looks like a really weird yin yang symbol. Uh, for this one, you're gonna notice that there are semicircles built on top. Um, center point is exactly in the center of the circle. You'll see that there's um, a common size in between the segments in the center. That is something that needs to be reproduced perfectly. And of course they flow properly. For the rest of it, the dimensions of course are done on a dimension layer and they're naturally appearing in red. These Roman numerals are text items. So you reproduce them using the text command and you're writing them on the dimension layer because they're part of the annotations of the drawing. So nothing special there. Let's take a look up top. For number one, it says reproduce with precision the eight designs you see in the diagram. All required dimensions are present. So do not believe you, you don't have enough info. I had mentioned that before. Uh, be precise because CAD is always precise. You need ultimate levels of precision. Look at the diagrams carefully as I described. I, I just said a lot of hints. Number two says each of the eight figures should be apart from each other by five units OC. That means on center. So to start yourself off inside the CAD drawing, I would simply pick any spot and then you want to probably draw a line. So I can type at five comma zero and that's a line that goes five units to the right. And then I'll draw another line that goes downward five units from here. So at zero comma negative five. And then I will take those two pieces and I will copy them from here. And I'll put this here for the second one, the third one and the fourth one. And then over here, that's for the bottom, the second one on the bottom, the third one on the bottom, and the fourth one on the bottom. So essentially, and I'm not measuring this right now, but you're going to put your patterns at these points. There. So those are spaced correctly. I think I snapped the wrong with this one. So that's it. Please follow the directions and I am sure you'll be able to be challenged a little bit by this, but you'll be able to reproduce everything perfectly. Again, make sure you follow the directions, read everything on here. The, all the information that's necessary is printed. Follow these directions for editing the dimension style and you'll have uh, a finished drawing in no time. This is a challenging one, but you'll be fine.